So to create our bar chart, what I'm going to do is head back into the code here and then in our charts directory in barchart.html, uh, barchart component.html, so our bar chart template. What I'm going to do is basically just create a single div of class chart. And this is going to contain a canvas element that has a number of different inputs on it that we can provide at the component level. And so we'll use this base chart directive that's provided to us by ng2 charts. And we can provide uh, the particular data sets and we're going to set that to a property of bar chart data. Our labels, which we'll set to bar chart labels. Some options. legend a chart type um, which in this case we'll say bar chart type and then we'll just go ahead and close off this element there are some other things that we can do here for example control what happens when we click the chart or hover over the chart and in that case, we could emit some uh, particular event that we could then handle in Angular. We'll take a look at event emitters later in this course. But for our first bar chart here, we're just gonna be taking a look at how to input data. So basically the square brackets here provide us with an input binding um, to our canvas element here that has this base chart directive to define this chart. And we're going to bind it to some values that we set on these properties in our bar chart component. And so this is all template syntax, which corresponds to the actual bar chart component file, which is in TypeScript here. So this is all template syntax provided to us by Angular that we can implement. And we'll be able to define these properties that we're binding these inputs to inside of our bar chart component.ts file. So this component will grow over time, and ultimately what we'll have is a data service that will actually inject into this component that's going to actually handle fetching data from our web API over HTTP and returning us some data that we can actually then use to set values on properties in this class. But before we get that far along, we can actually just kind of see how things are starting to work by creating some mock data um, and storing it in a constant here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is have a constant and we'll just call this sample bar chart data. And this can be of a type any array. So it can be an array of anything. And it's gonna be an array of objects here. And we're gonna format this in such a way that chart.js expects to see um, data. So we're gonna have an object with a data property and then we're going to actually specify that data. So let's just create a list of numbers here. And then we'll have a label property, which we maybe we'll call like fall sales or something. These numbers don't necessarily mean anything. Um, they're just a way for us to represent data that we can display on the chart. Oops, and we do need to make sure we have an equal sign here. And then we'll just create some different numbers here for our second data set. And maybe we'll just call this like Q3 and Q4 sales or something. So just some mock data that we can use to show in our chart. And then we're gonna create a separate constant here to hold our labels, which will be an array of strings. And I'm just gonna have um, labels as something like weeks. So week one, week two, week three, etc. So 
So you just want to make sure that the number of labels here in the string array corresponds to the number of data points in each of your two series. Okay, so now let's take a look inside this bar chart component class. So we have a constructor. When we actually have a data service, we're going to inject that service into the constructor of this class. We won't worry about that for now, so we'll leave it empty. And the other thing to notice here is that the bar chart component is implementing on init, which we're importing from Angular Core. So this is a lifecycle method. Basically, it's going to get called when this component gets initialized. And by implementing on init, we're requiring this class bar chart component to have an ng on init method contained in it. Strictly speaking, we don't have the concept of interfaces in JavaScript, um, but what TypeScript allows us to do is to create sort of compile time errors that won't allow us to compile the code um, until we implement this particular interface. So it's just another way the TypeScript can kind of help us um, construct code you know, by displaying what our intentions are for it. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create some properties in this class. I'm going to create a public bar chart data property, which can be an array of anything. Bar chart labels, which is an array of strings. And again, you can see how we're going to populate these properties with some of the constant data that we have created here. And so you can see that what we're ultimately going to do here is to set these bar chart data and labels properties on this class to the constants that we have defined here. The type will be bar and we'll set bar chart legend to false. So if you recall back when we created this bar chart component.html file in our template, again, this is the template that corresponds to our bar chart component here. We have these inputs, data sets, labels, options, legend, and chart type. And so we're setting the value of these inputs that we're passing into this canvas, which has this base chart directive on it, um, the values on each of these properties. So right now we don't have values on those properties. We've just defined them in the class so that we can begin to set them up. So the last one that we need here is bar chart options. And we're going to say this can be anything. And we'll provide a couple of different properties on this object that we can pass. So for example, show vertical lines, we're going to set to false. And responsive, we'll set to true. This is just going to control some of the display options on our bar chart. So now I can actually go ahead and just set this bar chart data property of type any to our sample bar chart data. And I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit. And I'm going to try to scoot this over just a little bit so that we can see it. And I'm just going to try to scoot this over a bit so that we can see it. Likewise, we'll set the bar chart labels here to our bar chart labels array that we've defined above. And now since we've implemented a new library, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and restart the server here as well. So again, control C will shut your server down and then control P to get to the last command, which was ng serve. Okay. So everything's compiling. And so let's go take a look at our page. Okay, so we are getting an error, and it says we can't bind to data set since it isn't a known property of Canvas. All right, so what's happening here is that Angular is telling us that it doesn't know how to handle this data set's input um, because it doesn't see it as an input that's available on this Canvas type, which should be provided by this base chart directive. So what I've forgotten to do here is head over to the app.module.typescript file and we'll go ahead and move this over so we can see it in full for now. And actually, I'm just going to close these tabs and we'll view it full screen. 
So you can see here in our app modules where we need to actually import all the various modules and components that our application will be making use of. What I need to do is of course to also import charts module from ng2-charts. And in fact, the docs on ng2-charts also reminded us to do this. So now on imports, we can also go ahead and just bring it in here, charts module, and we'll go ahead and save. So we can close app modules, and let's go take a look at the page now. Okay, so we'll refresh, and we're getting undefined is not a chart type. So that means that something is wrong with the input binding on our chart type. So let's head over into bar chart component HTML template. And this looks just like a typo because um, bar chart type is actually what's going to be undefined um, because we should have defined a bar chart type. And in fact, if we double check that back in our component here, indeed uh, bar chart type is set to bar. So let's go take a look at the page now. Okay, so that's good. So now we're seeing our first chart. And you'll notice that out of the box, Chart.js really does kind of a nice job in terms of display. So I think this data, you know, looks pretty good. We don't have a legend. We could set legend equal to true to view that. So we'll save and go take a look now. And so now we can see uh, we have a nice bar chart with a legend. So we can even click on each of these series to hide or show it from the chart, which is kind of cool. Also notice that the chart is responsive. So if we kind of change the size of the browser here, um, the size of the canvas should automatically update as well. That's pretty nice for something like what we have here where you know this type of application would typically be displayed um, full screen. All right, so that's our first Chart.js chart. It'll be a lot more interesting when we're actually feeding it some real data. Uh, but at this point, we have shown how we can actually get a bar chart from Chart.js set up and running in Angular 4. In the next video, what we're going to do is create two other types of charts for this page.